Graduation, what an exciting time where the real world slaps you in the face. Hallelujah. Could have summed it up in those words, Dad, and been done just like that real quick. No, I'm just kidding. Good job, Dad. You did a great job. Amen. Praise the Lord. Proud of our graduates. We love them. Amen. <clears throat> Going on to God things. Hallelujah. Good things and God things. Amen. Lord, we just love you. We praise you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that we're a peculiar people, Father. We thank you that we're not like the world, but we're different. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, that you use us to declare the word of love and glory and the gospel. Hallelujah. And Lord, I thank you for the healing power of Jesus in this place. I thank you for the peace of Jesus in this place. I thank you for the throne room of heaven, Lord, that it's available in this place, that you come down and your presence is here with us right now, Lord. And Father, I thank you. <clears throat> For whatever needs to be said, whatever needs to be done in this place, Lord, let no man, including myself, have control, but let you have control of this place today in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that I speak your oracles today. I thank you that the word of the Lord comes out of my mouth today. I yield my tongue to you today, Holy Spirit, and I thank you that you do and say what you want to do and what you want to say, you say in this place today, Holy Spirit. Our hearts are soft, our hearts are yield to, yielded to you, Father. And Lord, I thank you that we can experience you today like we never have before, Lord. Let fresh revelation, let fresh knowledge come to us, let wisdom come to us, let conviction come to us if need be, hallelujah. Spank our butts if need be today, Holy Spirit. We want you to do whatever you want to do in this place because we want to be true servants of the Most High, hallelujah. And we yield to you today in Jesus' name, amen. Hey Amen. How many of you guys would agree, and I just, I just want to welcome you to Believer's Church Hospital today. Praise God. Amen. There'll be people healed today. There'll be people Amen. saved from hell today. There'll be people delivered from devils today, if you want it. That's, I'm glad. Thank you. Clarence and two others. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm at the right place. You know, <clears throat> I came here good this morning, and I started shouting, and I'm blew all that stuff out of my throat that needed to be blow out, I guess, you know. Kind of like a car, you know, if you only drive it around town for a year straight, you know, and you don't really step on the gas, you blow all those emissions out, you know, if you need to. That's what happens sometimes when you don't praise the Lord enough, man. You know, you get, you get clogged up and you got to, and you got to shout it out, you know what I mean? Amen. Praise God. You know, I, uh, I just want to share with you that, that, um, <clears throat> Some of you know me pretty well, some of you barely know me, and some of you don't know me at all. Um, I'm just a real person, and um, I just, I, I love Jesus, and uh, I'm different. I've really changed a lot. And, um, and I'll tell you how, and this will, this will speak to at least one person, I hope. It's because I just, I, I, I got rid of caring about what people thought about me, to be honest with you. Not in a bad way but in a good way. How can I hide who Jesus is in me? I, I told the Lord several years back, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever you tell me to do. And I meant it. I, I really did mean it. And when you make a statement like that, get ready for backlash. Get ready for uh, ammunition being fired at you, you know. And the devil coming to attack and all that stuff. How many of y'all have ever gone through a time in your life where you just have been miserable? Anybody in here ever gone through a misery time, man? Just like, oh my gosh, you know? <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't have enough hands. Come on, Josie. Amen. That'll preach. No, we've all gone through those times, right? And even myself, gone through those times several times, you know. And uh, I remember one particular time I was going through just a rough time, and I was 19 years old. And, um, you know, it was kind of like that, you know, get out of high school. I've been out of high school for about a year and a little over a year. And, and um, I was just kind of at that crossroads in my life where I didn't, I wasn't sure uh, really even what I wanted to do. At the time, I didn't even know I was really called to ministry that I knew of and and I, and I, I just was kind of there, you know, I went to college, played some baseball at junior college, and then that just kind of like drifted away from me, and, 
And I was just talking with Dad about this the other day. I, I came to a point where I just I hated school. I didn't want to go to school anymore. Um, I basically went to school to play baseball pretty much and uh, stuff like that. And I guess there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, whatever drives you. But I, I came to a point in my life where I, I came to a kind of a crossroads in my life, and I wasn't quite sure what was going on. I was still immature, and 19, you don't think you're immature, but you are immature. Uh, 42, you're still even immature in areas, amen? And so, and that's how old I am, by the way, so I'm not picking on any other 42-year-olds. I'm, I'm 42, so don't get offended. But I, I uh, was at a, like a crossroads, kind of a, an area in my life where I wasn't sure, and, and some personal things was taking place in my life, just some things I was going through, some decisions I was having to make, I was having some heartache in some areas of my life, and just things didn't look well, and I even was even thinking about just, man, I just kind of want to just move away from here and get away from the people from the church, my mom and dad, you know, my family, you know, I even have had, I remember one time I had a thought like that, I was driving down Granada, I can tell you right where I was at, I was on Granada, driving down Granada, just past the river, and I even had a thought like, you know what, I can just keep driving right now and just go find somewhere and just forget, come, come, don't come, just get away from this place for a while. Amen. And um, <clears throat> little did I know, about two weeks later, after a certain situation took place in my life, after, after going through all this, I was laying in my bed at night, and I just felt... Now, I didn't plan on coming here to share this this morning. I, I came here really plan. I don't know. I, I come here never planning to share anything, really, to be honest with you. So I just get up here, and here goes God. You know what I mean? And I love that because that makes it way easy, you know? And um, <clears throat> I remember laying in my bed one night, and I just felt, I don't know how to explain it to you, but it was like the conviction where it was like the love of God was there, but there was also like the darkness was there. I don't know how to explain it. You know how you see those little cartoons where you have the angel and then you have, you know, the devil on one side of the shoulder? You know, you've seen those before. That's almost kind of like it was like. And I was just laying there in my bed, and I'm just like, man, Lord, you know, I am so, like, wrong right now. Like, the way I'm acting, the things I've been partaking in the past several years, the, the things I've done, the decisions I've made, just horrible, God, totally against your word, totally against what I've been raised uh, been taught totally against all that God my life is going nowhere and I was 19 years old and I was just laying there thinking that you know and I went to bed just honestly I went to bed just miserable I don't know how to explain it and I remember waking up in the morning and when I woke up in the morning I woke up really early that morning and when I woke up it was like there was it was almost like <clears throat> him didn't you know it was almost like Jesus was right there when I woke up in the morning and he was like it was like I felt his love it was totally opposite of what I felt before I fell asleep six seven hours earlier and it was like I felt his love and it was almost like I it was almost like I didn't get up out of bed myself someone pulled me up out of that bed almost it was just really weird it was like a supernatural experience and I went straight, and I knew right what I was doing when I walked out of my room. I went straight down the hallway, straight into the living room, because I knew I'd find my dad sitting in there reading the Word and drinking coffee. Because that's what he does. And he still does it today. And so I went right in there, and I said, Dad, and I don't know if you even remember this day or not. He remembers. I said, Dad, I said, um, man, I'm totally not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not living right. I'm not doing things right. I've been living like this for a long time. And he knew the struggles and things I had and things that were going on in my life. He knew, already knew. But I said, I need to rededicate my life back to the Lord. And this was in, um, this was in um, uh, early, like January, February of 1994. And by the time, by the time summer of 1995 uh, came around, I was already involved in, in, in ministry. And I'm saying this because <clears throat> many of us think that where we're at right now in life, some of you, now this thing is going to speak to everybody in here, I believe, what I'm going to say right now. This is going to speak to a few folks, some folks, okay? Because some of us have already experienced this and we've gone on beyond this, but there's some folks in here right now that you're thinking that you're not really making an effect, and, and there's no way that you can catch up to where you think you should be right now with the Lord or spiritually. 
But God is saying that, yes, He can catch you up to where you need to be with Him spiritually. It's kind of like during the day, and we all, we'll all identify with this right here. It's kind of like during the day when it turns about 11.50 a.m., and all of a sudden you start having these weird feelings down in your stomach, and it's called hunger. If you eat at 12, you know, at your work, maybe you have to eat at 12 or something. You know, and there's that big old carne asada burrito <laughs> that you just got from Mexico right here where they can't even understand you when you order in English. That's like the place you want to go. That's why Caleb always takes Rob and Crystal with them all the time. Caleb does a pretty good job speaking Spanish, so huh? he's the white, whitest person at the church, but he speaks Spanish pretty good. But burrito, and it's sitting there, and you see that, or whatever your favorite meal is, and you just sit there, and you look at it, and you're just kind of like, man, I sure am hungry. That sure would taste good, and that sure would feel good in my stomach right now. Maybe not after you eat the whole thing, but it sure, it sure would be good to taste that sucker, you know? But if you leave it there, it won't satisfy. You'll be, you'll be hungry, you'll be in pain, you'll be wishing and wanting. Well, it's the same thing with God. God's sitting in your life right there before you. The presence, the power, and the Holy Spirit is right before you, and it's sitting there. And the presence of the Lord is there for you to take. What are you scared of? Huh? Anxiety? Okay, can I pray for you? What's your name? Alondra. Alondra. It's okay, Alondra. Stretch your hands out towards Alondra. Just let me have your hand. In the name of Jesus. Okay. It's okay, just, just let me pray for you. Just relax for a second. I'll pray for you, and I, I promise you the presence of God will come on you, the peace of God will come on you, the love of God will come on you. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, spirit of fear, loose her right now. In Jesus' name. It's okay. In Jesus' name. You foul-tormenting spirit, take your hands off of Londra right now. In Jesus' name. You have no right to be in the same room as me or anybody else in this building. So you loose her now in Jesus' name. You go from her right now. I command the spirit of fear to go. I bind you and I cast you out in Jesus' name. And I thank you for the love of God right now in this young lady's heart right now. Thank you for the peace of God right now that's coming over her right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, the peace of the Lord. Yeah. See, the devil has to obey me, you, or anybody because he can't stand in the presence of the Lord. That's your sensing right now. What do you sense? Just the peace of God? Huh? The blood of Jesus. Spirit of fear, go in Jesus' name. Take away all your pain. Okay. I understand that. Come here for a second, Dad. Just for a second. Let me let me let me take some time, please. Okay, I know. Listen, okay. I want you just to listen to me for just a second, okay? The same thing you're struggling with, I've been struggling with for a year. I'd pass out, I'd have I'd have attacks and I would actually pass out and fall, hit my head on the ground and everything else. Okay? It's nothing but a feeling. And it's the devil trying to torment you to get you over into fear, to dominate your life and keep you nervous, worry, and just ruin yourself. Okay, so I'm understanding what you're talking about right now. Please believe me on that, okay? Okay, but it's a spirit of fear, and it's the enemy, and he, he, he wants to torment you. But have you ever asked Jesus to be your Savior? You never have? Okay, well, let's, can, would you like to do that? Okay, well, let's just do that. It's very simple. Just, just say this after me. Say, Jesus, Jesus forgive, me of my sins. forgive me of my sins. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for dying for me. And giving your life to me. And giving your life to me. Jesus, Jesus, I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth. That Jesus, that Jesus 
You are my Lord. And you are my Savior. And I give you my life. I will serve you. I will follow you. And I will obey you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm just going to... Okay, okay, will you go with Pastor and Tammy, and, uh, 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 okay, make sure you, make sure you come back, though, because I have a word for you, though, okay, Jesus' name, peace of God, peace of God, right now, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for that, Lord, we thank you for Alondra, Lord, the salvation and healing that you're bringing to her right now, Father, Thank you for the peace of God. In Jesus' name. That's what it's about, folks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Believers Church Hospital. Patient number one, saved. <clears throat> Healed, and she'll come out set free, I promise. <laughs> In Jesus' name, Lord, minister to Clarence right now, Lord. It's your healing flow right now, Lord. In Jesus' name, I bind that spirit of fear and I command it to go in the name of Jesus. Loose him and let him go in Jesus' name. Now, you have enough. You're in agreement with me, but you have enough ammo in you to run him off. So you use it in the name of Jesus. When he rises his little head up, you just shoot it off with the word. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. See, we've been prophesying this. This kind of stuff right here. We knew it was coming. Okay, I, I maybe over the, we've been here 33 years, and I've probably seen a couple times over the years that I can recall, maybe more, I don't know, where someone has reached out during the middle of a message like that. To me, that's not interrupting me. You know why? And because I'll tell you why, because I always tell the Holy Spirit to interrupt anyways. Especially if I start getting off over into stuff that I just want to do. I want him to interrupt for sure. And if he has to lay me out on the floor and hold me there to accomplish what he wants to accomplish, I'm fine with that. I just want the Lord to do what he needs to do in our lives today. You know, me and Ted were talking about this before service today, that this is why it's so important to gather together, especially as the days get towards the end. The Bible says that we need to not forsake the gathering together. We need to come together. Get together. You know, it's so easy to watch social media, Facebook Live, YouTube. There's all kinds of churches and things going on. That's okay. That's a tool. I watch stuff like that throughout the week a lot, man. A lot of my friends minister on there. I watch, listen, receive from them. But there's something about coming together as a community and getting together in the presence of the Lord, sharpening each other. Amen. That young lady needed us to pray for her today. Praise God. So we're here for her to serve her and help her and help her get deliverance just like we got it. In our lives at one point. Amen. Amen. So see, that's how important it is for us to get together. Amen. In these days ahead. Praise God. So we've been talking about that. But talking about what I was saying before, you know, you come to a point, and I believe that a lot of us in here, some of us in here, have come to a point in our lives where it's like we feel like it's, it's, we've kind of just been in this, in this lane for a long time. You know, you get out in the middle of the desert somewhere, like, or you get out like in Wyoming or Arizona or New Mexico or even Texas, Oklahoma. You get out in those plains out there, man, and some of you know, and it's just, it's 80 miles an hour, and it's straight ahead for miles, and there's nothing out there but coyotes and jackrabbits. And you're just like, am I ever going to get to a gas station? Am I ever going to get to my destination, man? And it just seems like it takes forever. Me and my family are leaving in July to drive all the way back to Tennessee. It's going to be a long drive. It's going to be a long time. And I'm going to, I guarantee you I'm going to have a thought more than once, am I ever going to get to where we need to get to? What's the GPS saying, man? How far are we away, man? You know what I mean? And so, like, we, some of us feel like we've just been on this road, and we're just like, okay, okay, Lord. But listen, guys, I'm telling you, sometimes the Lord will have us on that road for a purpose because he wants to teach us some things before he takes us to that next destination. Amen? Amen. And so, don't give in. Don't give up. <clears throat> don't let go. Keep looking to the Lord. Keep seeking after him. Just like you see that favorite food sitting there, and you're hungry, you go after that food and eat it because 
need it. It's the same thing with the presence of God, the same thing with the love of God, the same thing with the forgiveness of God, the same thing of, of, of the mercies of God. You go after it. You press in to seek and want to know more about His love, His presence. Want to know what your gifting is. Want to know, God, what your calling is. Look, I kind of know what my gifting is, but I know there's more to it. I know that God can sharpen that talent, sharpen that gifting in me as I go before Him. Amen? Amen. So don't draw back. Go forward into what He's called you to do. Amen? Turn over to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. <clears throat> Praise God. I love God moments. I love them. That was a God moment right there. I just I want to run into that office and help her, but God, Dad's in there. Praise God. Just God moments are good, man. Hallelujah. Yes, He's coming on. We need God moments. Galatians thir- or chapter 3, let's look at um, so many good things in here. Let's look at uh, uh, verse 10. Galatians chapter 3, verse 10 says, For as many as are the works of the law are, uh, of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to them. Now listen, it gets better here, watch. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Yes, the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That, now listen, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. That's shouting words right there, praise God. In Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Christ came to abolish the law. There ain't nobody in this place, and if you raise your hand and say you can, we'll pray for liars after service. There isn't nobody in this place that can obtain the law and keep the law. We're all disqualified if we try to live under that. There is no perfect person. There's no way. The only person that was perfect that walked the face of the earth was Jesus Christ. That's why... He was a sinless, spotless lamb, the Bible talks about. That's why he could give himself over to death for you. Because he kept what the Father God told him to keep. Adam couldn't do it, therefore he brought the curse on the land. Therefore men got a hold of it. Men had their ideas, their perceptions, their opinions. Their theories, their doctrine. Man brought all this stuff into this and it brought nothing but condemnation, judgment, people trying to be perfect. They can't be perfect. It brought condemnation. That's a huge one. So therefore, Jesus came to redo what Adam did. He came as a man in the flesh. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted by the devil, just like you're tempted by the devil. It said that they persecuted him just like they persecute you. It said that they tried to throw him off a cliff. They tried to kill him. They tried to do all this stuff. But Jesus followed the Father. He left a perfect example for us. Doesn't mean we have to be perfect. But he shed his blood, giving his blood, because he knows we're not perfect. And he knows we can't keep the law. So he did this for us. He put the, de- put the law to death. He, sent the- he left this place. He sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's here to counsel us, to comfort us, and to lead us into the things of God. The Holy Spirit gets, the, uh, gets His uh, 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 commands and demands by the Father God. So, one of the biggest hang-ups I believe Christians have, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I was one of these, and sometimes it tries to creep back into my life. One of the biggest enemies I believe Christians have, hang-ups Christians have, is they try to be too perfect in serving the Lord. That doesn't mean you don't strive to please the Lord. The Bible says in Hebrews, 
it says, <clears throat> it says, that, how's it go? Um, um, it's Hebrews 11. Hebrews 12? Hebrews. No, no. Um, gosh, it just slipped my mind. I had it on the tip of my tongue. It says basically, you, you, uh, uh, gosh darn it. I don't think it's it either. It doesn't say in Hebrews 11, gosh darn it. Wait, I know it. Someone blurted it out. That's a good one, but that's not what I'm thinking of. God is a rewarder to those who diligently seek Him. But what's the first part? It slipped my mind. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. But God is a rewarder to those who diligently seek Him. Seek Him. Hebrews 11, 6. Here's in Hebrews 11. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. So basically there, what does that say? Believe in Him. But not only believe in Him, have relationship with Him. Amen. Jesus came to have relationship. He came to have relationship through His death through His blood, and through His resurrection. The best thing that can happen to you is the blood and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the best thing that can happen to you. When you realize, and you study, and you realize that you have the DNA of God on the inside of you, that young lady there, when she received Jesus, she received the DNA of God on the inside of her. Jesus Christ. I got a, I'm telling you, back in 2012, I got a hold of that. I heard Brother Prophet Larry Huggins preach that word about the DNA of God, His blood on the inside of us when we give our life to Christ. That changed my life. This was on a Sunday night. He preached this here on a Sunday night. I grabbed a hold of that. I grabbed a hold of that. Like I, I had never heard it like that. I, it was revelation to me. I went and saw my doctor the next day because I had my yearly appointment. I went and saw him the next day. And he had always said, man, your blood looks good. But that next day, I had never heard him say, this is how I said it, wow, your blood is perfect. What have you been doing? And, and honestly, I could have went into, well, I got the DNA of God in me, and this is what I heard last night. And he probably would have just went, uh, mental institution, come pick my patient up, please. <laughs> But I didn't get into all that. All I responded was, because his, his reaction caught me off guard. So the first thing I said was, I didn't know Jesus has healed me. That's all I can say. And that's the truth. But we have the DNA of God in us. We have his life. The life of Christ resides and lives on the inside of us. The biggest hindrance that Christians have is they try to be perfect and they allow condemnation to come in when they blow it. As a kid, you ever be running down the street or riding your scooter or riding your bike and you fall off it and you skin your knee or you skin your elbow? Well, we trip and we fall. We skin our elbows. We skin our knees. We fall flat on our face sometimes where we realize, what am I doing? Why did I do that? God, forgive me. And that's the best thing you could do. God, forgive me. Help me with my heart in this area, Lord. Change my heart in this area. My heart, like David said, I come before you, God, man. I judge myself. I examine myself. If there's anything in me, Father, yank it out. God does not care how many times you pray that prayer, guys. See, because that's another thing the devil tries to throw in your face. Well, you've already prayed that 999 times. If there wasn't power in that, the devil wouldn't be mouthing off to you about it. He'll do anything to stop you from having a relationship with the Father God. He'll, he'll throw the kitchen pans. He'll throw the refrigerator at you. He'll throw everything at you, man, to try to get you to stop. But you just keep on marching. Keep on learning. Keep on fellowshipping. Keep on walking throughout your day, talking in tongues, praying in the Holy Ghost. You want to recharge your spiritual batteries and your batteries of faith? Pray in the Holy Ghost throughout the day. Pray in the Holy Ghost. You know, my daughter last, you know, my daughter, she's been, she's had a fever since Tuesday. And um, 
So, of course, man of faith and power that I am, I was kicking the devil's hiney with my mouth all week. And that's putting it nice. And I was angry at him, and I was mad, and I was telling him to take his hands off my daughter. She would get some relief, and then she'd get a fever again, and just it was kind of back and forth. So I spent some time laying on my face before the Lord at night because I didn't know what was going on. I was trying to see my daughter feel like cruddy because my daughter is just a happy person. She's awesome. I love her. She's a lot of fun. And I'm just like, Lord, you know. So anyways, finally, <clears throat> yesterday, we took her over to the, to the doctor, and, and they diagnosed her with colitis. And so now we understand why she was having all these symptoms, blah, blah, blah. So when she got home and I saw her, when she got home, I said, I said, good, now we know what it is. Now we know what to talk to you. The Bible says that every name that is named is, a, is under us. Tonsillitis is a name. Tonsillitis, get out of my daughter's body. So I said, Allie, when I left this morning for church, I popped my head back in the room and I reminded her, I said, while you're sitting here today, every time you think about your tonsils, just thank the Lord that your tonsils is whole, is new, is clear, is infection-free. Just start praising and thanking the Lord because now you know what has been pinpointed and now you can go after it. And you'll have it if you'll go after it. So see, the devil, I shared that example because the devil will try to get you to focus on the misery. One of his number one tactics for me in 2008 when I was going through leukemia, one of his number one tactics when he came after me is he would try to play the time game with me. This is taking too long. Where's your healing? You believe the word. You believe by his stripes you're healed, 1 Peter 2.24. You believe what the word says. You're born again. You're a child of God. You're not getting healed. Where is it? What's happening? Why do you have to keep driving to Fresno Monday through Friday to get a shot? Why do you have to do this? Why do you have to do He would try to do that to me, play the time game. And if you give in to that, what happens to you? And he doesn't tap you on the shoulder. He, dry, he comes and he tries to knock you out. But folks, let me tell you something. This whole business of the enemy, the Bible says, first of all, he's under our feet. See, if you're struggling in this area, if this has really been something you've been dealing with quite frequently, condemnation and the enemy coming after you and trying to get you to back off and seize up, which he does all of us, I pretty much probably everybody in here will qualify for that today. But if he is doing that, I, 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 I beg of you to get in there and find the scriptures that you can fight back with. Every time he opens his mouth, you shoot back at him. You shoot back at him. It's a process. It's a learning process. You'll learn. You'll learn how to combat him with the scripture. You'll learn how to overtake him with the word of God. And you need, you need to be fine-tuned. Now, I'm putting, a, I'm putting a demand on you because this is a demand I put on myself. We need to be fine-tuned in the word of the Lord. Because that's what brings power. That's what brings deliverance is the word of God. Not Mike Purcell trying to figure out in his mind how he's going to accomplish this or how am I going to get through this or how is this going to work. That does nothing. But how am I going to, by the word of the Lord, accomplish what God has called me to accomplish on the face of this earth? The word of the Lord has an answer for every situation, everything right now, everything that's on your heart right now, on your mind right now, personally, the word of the Lord has a scripture for it. And that scripture will bring conviction sometimes, that scripture will bring peace sometimes, that scripture will bring healing sometimes, that scripture will bring revelation and knowledge sometimes, that scripture can bring mercy that scripture can bring grace and favor to your life. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. They got it, they got it now to where you can just pull that app up on your phone and listen to the word of God. You can fall asleep with that in your ear all night. Someone reading the scriptures of the word. Well, I don't think that works. You need to get in there. You need to study. Folks, sometimes I'd rather listen to the Word of God than anything else. You want to talk about peace and healing and strength to your life? 
What you surround yourself is who you'll be like. What you meditate on is how you'll live. It's the truth. It is the truth, man. I know it for a fact. There's been times where God's even convicted me about music. Certain songs, certain music that I enjoy listening to. And he's like, stop. Because of what the influence is behind those lyrics, it will drive you. I'm not saying all music's bad. I'm just saying that's between you and the Lord. You've got to listen to Him. Okay? But let's just be honest. If it's talking about sex, drugs, and everything else, then you probably shouldn't listen to it unless you want to get into sex a bunch or do a lot of drugs. I mean, just being honest. Because there's a spirit behind that stuff. Some preachers preach that all secular music's bad. I disagree with that. I believe there's some secular music that's, that's really good. The lyrics are good. Talking about people's lives and help and things like that. I'm not going to get into all that, but I'm just saying that's between you and the Lord and you need to listen to Him. That's what I try to do. Okay? But what you surround yourself with, what you partake of all the time, what you do all the time, that's who you will be like and you'll become like. And I know this isn't rocket science today. This is understandable. We understand this. This is life. But see, I love that scripture where it says, be imitators of God. When I read that for the first time when I was a kid, I thought, yeah, how in the heck can that happen? How can I imitate God? I'm not God. I can't be God. But when you read the Gospels about the life of Jesus, he's very specific and he explains very well how you can be like him, especially John 14 and John 15. Those are huge. You want to know how to produce fruit? You want to know how to walk like Jesus walked on this earth? Read John chapter 14 and then read John chapter 15 about how he's the vine dresser and he comes in and he prunes everything off of you that you've grabbed onto this world that's not of him. He comes in and he takes care of business. He dresses you when you follow him. Isn't that good news? But see here in Galatians chapter 3, 13, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of of the law, having become a curse for us. <clears throat> what does that say? That says to me that I am not a curse. I am a blessing because of the blood of Jesus Christ. He took everything on Him that the devil tries to put on us so that we can have victory while we live on this earth and we can also have complete victory when we get to our true home, heaven. But while we're here on earth, we might as well be about Father's business. And yes, dare I say, become a fanatic for the love of Jesus Christ. Become a fanatic to love on other people. You want your life to shape up? Start loving others. You want needs met in your life? Start meeting needs in other people's lives. I remember one time I was sitting down there, hooked up to the IV, taking chemotherapy. And my dad called me on my cell phone. And I answered the phone, and I said, what's up, Dad? And he said, Mike, I got a word for you. And I said, give me that word, because I need it right now, for sure. And he said, he told me this morning, that if you'll sit there under your breath and look at people in that place and let the Holy Spirit lead your eyes across that room from about 30 to 40 other people sitting there with cancer and pray for them and speak life and decree health and clarity and love in their life, he said, God will give it to you speedily. You want healing? Release healing. You want an orange? Plant an orange tree. Same principle. Devil tormenting you, of course, you come after him and you rebuke him, but you also pray for people that are being tormented. There's something about that, man. You're about the Father's business. You're releasing mercy. You're releasing love. I, I, I beg of you, to, on a daily basis, when a family member comes up before you, or a friend comes up before you, or a prayer request comes to you from someone where you know someone's sick or in hell, bad health or something, just start asking, God, have mercy on them, God. Have mercy on them, God. The mercy of God, God asks us. He wants us to cry out to Him. 
wants us to ask Him. The Bible says if it's His will, He'll do it. It's His will to have mercy. It's His will to heal. It's His will to give. It's His will to bless. It's His will to love. It's His will to set things straight in your life. It's His will to heal you from past hurts, past curses. It's His will to heal you from that stuff. He has all that you need. Full supply. The Bible says that that um, Dad quoted that scripture just a second ago, where he says that uh, excuse, excuse me, it says that um, love maketh rich. But how's it go? And it has no sorrow to it. What is it? How's it go? The blessings of God maketh rich, and He adds no sorrow to it. That word "rich" there in the original means abundant supply, full provision. The Lord maketh rich. Abundant supply, full provision. And I guarantee you, when I said that, how many of you saw dollar signs right off the bat? Let's just be honest. You hear that. Abundant supply, full provision. Okay, I'm the only one. Okay, cool. Me and Bridget. Praise God. We've got money on our mind. Hallelujah. That's part of it, but it ain't all of it. Full supply in health. Full supply in finances. Full supply in power. Full supply in love. Full supply in authority, full supply in mercy, full supply in forgiveness, full supply in all that is of God. And it also says abundant, not just right at the top, just enough, abundant provision. God is a God that is full of love and mercy. And I double-dog dare you this. They say that comes from Missouri, but I don't know that saying. But I double-dog dare you this. Make it a priority in your life every day to desire full provision. And abundance imply from God. First thing that the enemy is going to tell you is you're not worthy enough for it. Because he just tried to do it in some of you. And I had that thought come to me when I said it right now. Because that's how he is. He's a chump. He's a liar. Oh, really? That means I must have full provision and full supply because the devil said I didn't. And he's a liar. Now, look. We can get in here, and I can get up here, and I can preach this, and we can get in here, and we can swing. If we had chandeliers, swing from the chandeliers, man. We could jump up and down, run around. But when it comes down to it, and you're in the battle, and you're in the fight, that's when you've got to know what you're doing. That's when you've got to know, how sharp is my sword? Dad says it all the time. Devil mouths off, pull your sword out, stick him with it, with the word. Because everything he says, you'll have a scripture for it, I guarantee it. Boo, be in fear. Fear, you're not going to have money. Fear, you're going to die. Fear, your kids are going to run away. Fear, 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 fear. Devil, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So I'm executing power on you right now. And I will have a sound mind. So shut up. Stick him with it. If he mouths again, stick him with it again. Sometimes he's a diehard sometimes. He's relentless sometimes. And I'm not preaching about the devil today. I'm just saying this is reality. I'm here to help you gain ground. You're here to help me gain ground in the kingdom. He mouths off, you stick him with it. He says something about your kids, your grandkids. You find in the Word where it says something about your grandkids and your kids, and you stick him with it. He can't absurd the Word of God. He can't throw the Word of God out. If he could do it, he would have killed Jesus. But he can't. And he didn't. 
Folks, we, now believe this. How many in here is saved and born again? You've asked Jesus to be your Savior. Lift your hand. Now, I'm looking because if you don't, I'm calling you up here. <laughs> so you better get saved before you leave this place. Ask Jesus in your heart. He loves you. You're saved. Okay. Here's what you qualify for, and here's who you are. You are, and we are, because God says so, we are the triumphant church. Don't compare yourself to other Christians. Don't compare yourself to other people. Look at who you are in Christ. Know who you are in Christ. Know what Christ has done for you. And you eat that. You drink that. You, 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 you sleep that. That becomes you. Be a fanatic. Know what God has done for you. And don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And don't let the devil kick you all over Madeira or whatever city you live in. But go forward believing that you are a son or a daughter of God, that you are kings and priests in this earth, praise God, and that God's plan for you is full supply, abundant vision. That's who you are. That's who you are. God's not going to have some little cottage for you in the corner of glory, man. I can just have a half an acre, God. If you just let me slide by by the skin of my teeth. Guys, that's not how it works. You're either there or you're not. I'm getting excited. The devil's scared and I'm excited. <laughs> We're taking over. Care what the flipping media says. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I just saw three Planned Parenthoods in the Bay Area shut down two weeks ago. We win. And we're winning. And we're winning because we want other people to experience Jesus the way that we've experienced it. Because we don't want to see people go to hell. I don't want to see people go to hell. Amen. I truly do not. Amen. I just want to be the part that I can be in whoever's life that needs Jesus. If I can just be that person that says for the first time to him, God bless you. If that's all God wants me to say to that person and I never see him again, I just want to play my part in their life. Right. I want to release something. Guys, we are the triumphant church. We truly are. And if you're struggling in an area in your life personally, and you feel like you've been beat up and you've been attacked recently, or something's going on right now, Mike Purcell can't fully help you. Jesus Christ has to help you fully. Go to him. You know, you need to find a local church. You need to go where God's telling you to go. If you don't belong to a local church, you need to find somewhere. If it's here, if it's somewhere else, go. But you need to go where iron sharpens iron, where you can be around people that have the same faith as you, that want to grow with you, that, that are going into the good things of the gospel, that are following Christ, where you can receive spiritual help and natural help and all the good stuff God that local church brings. But listen, when it comes down to it, you're the one laying in bed at home at night. And sometimes you've got to. You can't always call the pastor. You can't always call your best friend, your best Christian friend. There comes a time where you've got to come before the Lord on your own and make a demand on what you need. We need to continually grow spiritually. You know, Caleb, my son, just graduated last week. Guess what? He gets to pay up for his first car repair this week. Wow. <laughs> He's learning how to be a man. His car broke down yesterday. We are stuck out in the ranchos for over two hours, me and him. Took it to the mechanic. I said, guess what, son? What? You just graduated a couple weeks ago, didn't you? Yeah? All that money you got? Yeah? You get to pay for your first car payment, man. <laughs> I did a little dance. Glory! I'm getting out of debt. 
He looked at me, his eyes were as big as saucers, man. <laughs> if I have to, we'll see what it is. If I need to help you, I'll help you. But, but I was just giving him, you know, giving him a hard time. But it's time for him. He's got to learn some things. That's right. Pray for him. You know, we've got to grow sometimes in certain areas. I don't always want, I didn't want to make my first car repair either. Yeah. I wanted to buy some cool sunglasses or something, you know. Something like that or something. But, hey, when it comes down to it, you just got to do it sometimes, you know. It's part of growing up. Same thing with being a Christian and following Christ. God enjoys us, man. He doesn't want to smoke us. He wants to dance with us and twirl with us and laugh with us and love on us and weep with us and cry with us, His mercy and His grace. He wants to pour everything that He has on us. He says, how can I help these guys fulfill what I've called them to fulfill, man? That's what He wants to do. He loves us. But we've got to be responsible for actions in our lives. We've got to be responsible for decisions we make. We've got to be honest before the Lord. The best way to get help is to be honest. I know when I lied to my mom and dad, that never got me nowhere but red butt and hurt for a long time. And my dad was easy. My mom would beat the tar out of me. I was afraid of mom. I wasn't afraid of dad so much. He'd whip us good, but mom was relentless. She didn't need nothing. She just used her hand. That's how tough she was. Dad had to use a belt because his hands, I don't know. But anyways, but sometimes, sometimes we get spanked pretty good. And I'll tell you what, a lot of reasons why we get spanked pretty good is usually because it's our own fault. But we got to be responsible. If you have an issue in your life that you're struggling with, an issue that you know is not right and it's kind of hung on or something like that, the only thing you can do is go before the Lord and give it to Him and just ask Him to help you in it. But you got to be responsible, though, too. You slip, you mess up, don't kill yourself, beat yourself up over it, don't do any of that. Just repent and move on and ask the Lord and study John 15. It talks about what he'll do for people that struggle in areas in their life and that follow him. He'll come down and he'll dress you. He'll cut the fruit off. He'll cut the dead branches off. He'll cut the stuff off. Not the fruit, the dead fruit, I mean. He'll cut that off. Your life. And he'll heal you and restore you. Things I struggled with 15 years ago, I don't struggle anymore. He gave me healing in that. He, he helped me. He relieved me. But I had to make a decision to not go back to that stuff or the, the things. Amen. But God loves you. And I love you. And I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad you laughed. And I'm glad we had a good time this morning. Amen. Amen. We're going to receive communion today. And um, so we'll prepare to, to, to do that right now. And as we're doing that, um, I want to ask this question real quick. I felt like the Lord gave me this word that the ushers will be getting the communion ready. But as we're doing this, stay hooked in here. Okay. I heard the Lord speak to me and say, heal this morning. Someone been having a problem with their heel? You have? Is it your left heel? It's your left one? Okay, because I heard heel, and that was early this morning. And then when I got here, I heard left foot. So, but it's your left foot and it's your heel. Okay, well, come on up here. Anybody having struggling, struggling with their left foot? Pain in your left foot? Anybody else? Okay, well, I heard heal, and I heard left foot, so. I'm already healed because I got prayed for. You're already healed? You got prayed for? Yeah. Okay, well, cool. Prayed again. Cool. You're not hurting? Well, right now, well, I've been taking care you're, of you're speaking by faith right now to yeah. me. That's what you're doing, and that's awesome. Good, you're learning. Praise the Lord, man. I love it. <laughs> it's the kind of person I want to be around. All right, so, but you're taking pain pills yeah, for it because you're having pain. It, yeah. All right, cool. Lift your hands. Don't even say nothing. Just receive in Jesus' name. God says this, so there's a power gift attached to it, which is healing. Word of knowledge, gave me the word of knowledge, and now he'll release healing in Jesus' name. I command pain to leave his heel, his left foot now, Jesus. And I command the pain to never come back in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for healing, Brian, right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, when you came up here, were you having pain, just coming up here standing? No, you're not having pain right now? Okay. Well, Father, in Jesus' name, I say pain will not come back in the name of Jesus.
Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Sweetness of your presence, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. God's building a foundation in you. See, your feet, uh, your feet's a foundation. It helps us stand. It helps us brace ourselves when we need to. It's a foundation. I don't know, that's just kind of cool. That's what God said to me right now. But he's building a foundation in you. He's restructuring your life. And I know we've been hanging out and talking and being around each other quite frequently, but I see what God's doing in you and you've been talking to me, but this is what I'm seeing. He's rebuilding a foundation and restructuring your life. And if you'll stick with the plan that he has for you and you'll stick with what he's doing right now and don't waver off, stay on, that, stay on the path, which I, I think you have it now. I, I believe you've turned a corner in your life. I see that. It's very apparent to me. Just even naturally, I see it. But as you stay on that path and you don't waver from it, you won't even know yourself. And this is what I heard five years from now. It doesn't mean it's going to take five years, but I'm saying you'll change through these years but you won't even, you, you'll just be sitting there and having like a God moment five years from now just going, wow, Lord, wow. And I don't know what that fully means. That's all I heard. You could be somewhere else. You could be here. You could be doing something. I don't know what it is, but that's all I heard. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for bringing Brian up here with the word of knowledge, healing his foot, and also giving him that word. Lord, thank you for that encouragement. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Left foot. It's for my ankle and it kind of goes around the ball. Ball under, underneath? Okay. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, be healed now in Jesus' name. Your faith has made you whole in Jesus' name. Respond. You guys that came up here, respond in faith, believing that you receive in Jesus' name. There's a real tangible healing anointing here. It's very sweet and soft, but it's very powerful. In Jesus' name, command pain to go. Command reconstruction in her foot, Father. Heal tendons, nerves, bone. Jesus' name. Have you been having a circulation problem anywhere in your body or your feet or your legs or something that you know of? Um, sometimes with my hands. Arms. Your hands and your arms? Yeah, okay, I have a, also heel pain all the time. Oh, right there? Okay. Let me just lay my hands on that. I heard circulation. In Jesus' name, I command that right now to pop back in. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Lord, right now. In the name of Jesus, God, thank you. I command our nerves to be healed and alignment to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Foot. Left foot yep. Okay, be healed in Jesus' name. A lot of left footers. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Mm. Healed in Jesus' name. Some righties too. Be healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. You know, Clarence, you're a veteran. Veteran of faith. You know a lot. And God's going to use you to pour out all that knowledge and wisdom and revelation that you have concerning him. He's going to use you to pour it out, so be ready for it. This whole deal with your job and all this stuff, it's actually a promotion. Mm. So you need to find out what that means from the Lord and, and dig into that and see what he has for you to do because there's something coming up Amen. for you. You'll be busy. Thank you. And I believe it has to do with the word of the Lord, amen, mm. and his kingdom. Amen. So, so press into that and find out what it is. He'll show you. Okay. In Jesus' name. Amen. Left foot. No, it's my heel. My Your heel, the right foot. Yeah. Okay, heel. That's fine. Respond to healing. Father, in Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name, pain, go. And healing flow right now. Every step Karen takes, strength and healing and victory in the name of Jesus. Was it hurting you when you came up here to walk um, at no, all? It's no, okay. Like when I first get up in the morning, it hasn't, uh, I haven't walked, or if I sit down for okay. a ways. Okay, every time you do real, that. It gets real tight, and then I have to hobble around till it stretches. Every time you do that and you get up, thank you, Jesus. 
Amen. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Believe you receive. You're left. All these heels, man. My hands. I can't close them. Oh, that's right. Can't just, just joints are swollen or something? It's just been swollen. Okay, Father, in Jesus' name. Okay, so here's a lesson you're going to learn today. And you know this already, but I'll just, I'll re-encourage you a little bit. Start using your mouth as a weapon and speaking over them. Doesn't matter how long it takes, start speaking over it. Just keep speaking to them. Maybe ask the Lord, Lord, show me what you want me to speak, and he'll maybe even show you and give you some, give you some insight, some words on that. But start speaking over whatever's bothering you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I hook myself in agreement right now with Bernie. And I get in agreement. And your word says it to you. Get in agreement. It's touching anything on earth. You'll give it to him. You'll bless him. You'll help him. You'll heal him. So I get in agreement right now with her faith. And I release my faith with her right now in Jesus' name. And I release healing right now in Jesus' name to her hands. Command her joints to be unswollen. I command them to be healed right now by the power of God. And I command pain to leave her joints and her foot and her body right now in Jesus' name. That woman with the issue of blood, she went for a purpose. She went to receive from Jesus. She believed it, so just receive it right now. In Jesus' name. Ain't nothing you have to earn or beg or nothing. It's just something you praise him for because he's already done it. You act like it's already happened. I know that takes faith. That's why it's called faith. And you got to force yourself sometimes. But once you get into it, ooh, there's no stopping you, man. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. You're victorious. You're full of victory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Sir, how you doing, man? I'm just a, a bit on my legs. I'm just bothered. I just can't be still. They're hurting? Or? They're hurting. Okay. What's your name? Ignacio. Ignacio? Yeah. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on Ignacio right now. I command healing to flow in this man's legs. I command pain to go from him now in Jesus' name. Lord, I command circulation to flow in this man's body right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I ask you to touch him right now. Thank you for healing angels, ministered Ignacio, right now in the name of Jesus. I command healing and restoration to his back, and his bones, and his nerves. I command his blood to flow normal right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you for using Ignacio for your glory to lay hands on people and pray for healing as well, Lord. Use him in the healing ministry, Lord. Use him to help others that are in pain, God, as he prays that your miracle working power is released into lives in the name of Jesus. You've asked Jesus to be your Savior. You know him personally. Have you ever done that? You've never done that? You want to ask Jesus to be your Savior? You know what that means? You owe heaven and you owe hell, right? You don't want to go to hell? No. You want to go to heaven? Yes, sir. All right, so just repeat after me. Just put your hands out towards Ignacio. I love this stuff, man. Just say, Jesus, Jesus. forgive me of my sins. I give you my life. Jesus, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior. I give my life to you. I will follow you and serve you all the days of my life. Thank you for restoring my life and helping me in Jesus' name. Now let me just pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, devil, you lose again. <laughs> Another one into the kingdom today. Father, I thank you for the peace of God to surround Ignacio right now. He'll never know. He'll never know <clears throat> what he used to be because he stepped into a newness of life today. He stepped into the kingdom of heaven just like us. He's our brother. Amen. And Lord, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you ministered to him. I thank you that you've changed his life. I thank you that you speed things up in his life, Lord, that your goodness and your love and your blessing is poured out over him. I thank you that his body is healed, his body is restored, and devil, you have lost your hold over his life. And I thank you for the newness of life in Ignacio's life right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Ignacio, welcome to the kingdom of God, my brother.
<laughs> hey man, he's got he's got something for you there. He's gonna tell you what that is. Love you, brother. You're welcome anytime, man. Praise the Lord. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? What you need prayer for? Uh, I put off my your back. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah, that hurts. Hey, I've been doing a lot of walking. Okay. Okay, I got, hey, okay, I want to share something real quick about, if you don't mind if I share about your foot, is that okay if I share that real quick? For, there's a reason for it. Um, his uh, left, he tore off one of his left toenails. Okay, now Bridget's sitting back there, that lady right there, see her hand lifted right there? She came up for prayer one time because her toenail was totally gone. This was on a Sunday. We prayed for her, and by Tuesday, her toenail had grown already back, brand new toenail. Pretty cool, huh? Sounds like a miracle, huh? That could probably happen to you, right, if you want that? Okay, well, let me just pray for you. What's your name again? I'm sorry. Carl. Carl, that's right. Father, in Jesus' name, stretch your hands out to Carl. Have you given your life to Jesus Christ ever? Yes. Yeah, before? Okay, good. I'm glad. Father, I thank you for Carl right now, Lord. He's obviously having pain in that foot. I command a new toenail to grow, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give him a miracle. Let it be a sign and a wonder to him and to others as he shares that, Lord. <laughs> that still blows me away without bridging when she shared that to me, and I believe in it. It still just blows me away. So, Lord, give him a new toenail right now. Pain leave and healing come. And, Lord, I just ask you right now in the name of Jesus Christ for provision in Carl's life. I thank you for speaking to him, Lord, and showing him what he needs to do, where he needs to go, and how he needs to do it, Lord. I'm asking you for a Holy Ghost intervention in his life. However you need to speak to him, Lord, if you need to give him a dream, a vision, if you need to speak to him with that still, small, peaceful voice by leading him, Lord, I ask you to do that for Carl right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I thank you for your love and your peace to surround Carl right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen brother. Bless you, man. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Two heels. Two heels. Your heel. Amen. I think God loves heels, though, really, to be honest with you. Yeah. How many of y'all like heels, like on, in the loaf, the, bread, the loaf of bread? I do. I love heels, man. They're perfect. You stick them in the toaster, man. They're nice and crispy. Slap some peanut butter on those bad boys with some... Anyways. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Command healing right now to flow in Jim's heels, Lord. This faithful servant of God, hallelujah. We just get in agreement right now. We speak healing now. And his heals. Pain leaves, strength come. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man, we're just, guys, I, I know this is taking some time, but just bear with us, please. I didn't come here just to, you know, I came here to worship the Lord and let the Lord lead. Amen. So how you doing? Doing better? Awesome. Okay. We'll, uh, uh, we'll talk more as time goes on. Okay, and um, Jesse's a great person. You guys been friends for a long time or just barely know each other? Or? Okay, she's awesome. She, she'll be a good friend if you just listen to her. She's been around here. I've known her since she was a little kid. Okay, she's, she's a good person. She, she loves you and she cares about you and she'll help you. God put her in your life for a purpose. So just try to hang on to that for a season or whatever it is, okay? The word I had for you earlier was the word firebrand. And I need to get the definition for this word. And I believe this word pertains to, um, I believe this word pertains to people that are 30 years old and under in this place today. Doesn't mean that we can't, us old people, you know, we can't uh, receive that. But I believe that you can receive this word, but I really heard the Lord say to me, 30 years old and under. So if you're 30, and I'm not praying for you up here, it's okay to receive it where you're at right now. But listen to this. I looked at Jesse today, and I heard the word firebrand. I looked up the definition for firebrand, and it means a person who is passionate about a particular case, or excuse me, a person who is passionate about a particular cause, typically inciting change and taking radical action. Oh, come on. <laughs> or definition two, a piece of burning firewood. <laughs> Glory. So, Lord, I just release that word into her life in Jesus' name. I thank you for the plan of God for Jesse. Amen. Obviously, I thank you, God, for the plan of God for everybody in this place. But, Lord, for Jesse and the 30-year-olds and younger, Lord, I thank you that they're firebrands for you. 
and they will, just like that firebrand leaves that mark on that cow or that cattle, Lord, they'll leave a mark of God on everyone's lives that they touch on their generation. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you're into tattoos, that would be a pretty sweet tattoo. The word firebrand and with some fire around it, that'd be pretty cool. But if that's up to you, amen. I probably opened up a can of worms on that one. I'll probably get judged about that saying that. But anyways. Is there somebody in here who's been praying for someone by the name of Richard? Come on up here if you've been praying for somebody named Richard real quick. Just come on up. This came to me when this service like first started today. Kind of service ever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are you having problems with your feet? I got the name Richard. And I said, Lord, what about Richard? He oh, said, on. somebody's praying for him. So, huh? That's fine. You've been praying for someone named Richard. Been praying so for Richard? Qualifies. Okay. Praise God. Anybody else? You know, I've seen the Lord do things like this in numbers. Yeah. He gathers everybody up that's praying for Richard. And it's amazing. We kill more than one bird Amen. with one stone. Amen. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you. He wants you to know, he had me call this out today, he wants you to know that uh, he's very mindful of your prayers. The devil's always telling you your prayers aren't working. That's one of his oldest, worst ploys. I mean, all you got to do is think about your own life. You knew the prayer works. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And the Lord just wants you to know today he's heard your prayers and he is on the job. There are angels working on the job. The Holy Spirit's working. God's even got people lined up and Thank you, Lord. maneuvering people. A lot of the maneuvering the people, the angels are maneuvering them. And he's going to connect. You know, the Bible tells us, uh, I don't know what you're praying for Richard about, but the Bible tells us to pray the Lord of the harvest to send workers into the harvest field. God knows exactly who that person, not only who they'll listen to, but he also knows know who has the gifts and anointings on their life to minister to that person. And sometimes it's not, even, not us. Sometimes we're just to do the thank prayer you, part. Jesus. So, Father, we thank you thank that you, you've heard these prayers about Richard. Thank you, Jesus. And, Lord, we thank you that the, <laughs> yeah, the harvest is reaped. Thank you, Lord. We Richard's thank you that the in. sickle is thrust into the harvest. Richard's coming and in. And the harvest is reaped Doing in what Jesus' God's name. In the name of Jesus. Dramatic turnaround. Dramatic turnaround. About yes. face. Yes. About face. You're going to yes. see Richard doing about face. Yes. He's going to be all like a new, different person. He's going to begin to be the person that God intended him to be all along, and yes. your prayers yes. have had a lot to do with it. Yes. So we thank you for it, Father. I, I sense the anointing of God right now just going forth. In Jesus' name, yep. we thank you for that worker in the harvest field, and we thank you that the sickle is thrust in and that Richard is reaped into the fullness of what you have for him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We praise you for it, Lord. Thank you for it. Sure. Um, uh, okay, so... Um, I just really feel like the Lord is saying this to us right now, too. What you're seeing in demonstration here this morning, okay, I, I believe that God's, I, I believe he's just starting to really show me this right now. It's really neat. I just got like a tip of it. But what I'm seeing and what I'm understanding by the Lord right now is some of the stuff that's taking place in this meeting today is stuff that you're going to start seeing outside these walls. Yeah. If you've noticed... Okay, he's brought the word of the Lord, which brings encouragement, which brings correction, which brings peace, which brings love, which brings forgiveness. Okay? He's, he's demonstrated in harvest, souls being reaped for the kingdom of God. Two people gave their life to Jesus Christ today for the first time. Okay, so we're seeing salvation. He's demonstrating in healing. He's demonstrating in words of knowledge. Okay, P people picking up things, hearing the Holy Spirit say things about certain people's lives and different issues, things like that. So I believe God's giving us a demonstration today, a practical demonstration today, because he wants us to take outside of this hospital here into the marketplace and deliver what we're receiving in here. Yes. No matter how long you've been a Christian, how, it doesn't matter. None of that matters. Just go do it and listen to the Lord, because I really believe that. Amen. One more prayer request, and we'll take communion, okay? My daughter, Allie, texted me just a minute ago, and she asked 
if the church could pray for her. Okay? And I told her that we would. And um, uh, so let's just pray for her, okay? She asked for that. I told her I would. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for Allison, Lord. We command tonsillitis to loose her body in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus Christ that our tonsils are healed. We curse infection. We command it to get out, Lord. And I thank you, Father God, for a speedy recovery in her mouth now. And as she swallows, I thank you that pain goes and healing flows. Let the fire of God touch her throat right now. And we get in agreement together, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's, let's pass out communion. We don't practice closed communion here. We, we receive communion together, and, and uh, we're not having uh, Jesus' funeral over again. This is a time of rejoicing because of the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus and what He's done for us. And uh, what I like to do, I know a lot of people do it different ways, but what I like to do concerning communion is I really believe it's a time between you and the Lord, personally. It's not so much, it, we're gathered together here doing it together, but I really believe that you're, as you're sitting there in your seat, that you have some time right now before the Lord. I like to approach communion of me just coming before the Lord and just closing my eyes and just seeing Jesus and what He did for me on that cross and seeing Him resurrect from the dead and, and giving me new life. And I like, I like just meditating on what the blood did for me what his body did for me while he hung on that tree. And not only did he give us life, but he came back to life. <laughs> and then he went to hell and took the keys from the devil, destroyed death, hell, and the grave, praise God, and gave us full victory. And all we're doing here is we are just remembering the covenant that we have through the blood of Jesus Christ. And blood comes, his blood brings forgiveness, his blood... Uh, healing, restoration. His blood brings everything that's of Him, it brings it to us. Deliverance, salvation, whatever it is. And so today, I just, as we sit here, I'm going to shut up for a while, and I just want you, you know, it'd be cool if we can just, you know, take some time right now with the Lord, with these little elements in your hand that represents the blood and the body of Christ. Just take some time, you and the Lord. And then we'll, uh, we'll receive uh, the elements together. Amen? <clears throat> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, that's true. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So faithful, Lord. For all you've done today, Lord. Thank you for all you've done for me, Lord. I just worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So good, Lord. Thank you for your peace that's in this room right now, Lord. Your love for us. Lord, we hold in our hand this cracker and this juice that represents your body, Jesus. And Lord, we just are so thankful and grateful that you came and gave your life for us to save us. And you're so full of love, and you're so true, and you're so real to us, Jesus. We love you. And Lord, I thank you that this cracker represents your body. You gave your body. You let them beat you. You let them spit on you. You let them curse you. You let them destroy your body for us. You took that pain upon you that we don't have to have it. And so, Lord, not only for us, but also, Lord, your body represents the body of Christ. 
And we thank you for wholeness, not only in our bodies, but in the body of Christ, Lord. We thank you for unity. We thank you for wholeness in our bodies and in the body. In Jesus' name, you can receive the cracker. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that this juice represents your blood, Jesus. There is nothing, nothing that compared to the blood of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that your blood forgives us of sin. Your blood restores us from unrighteousness. Your blood makes us righteous and right standing before the Father God. Your blood also, it says in 1 Peter 2.24 that by your stripes of blood we have been healed. And Lord, we receive healing physically. We receive healing mentally. We receive healing emotionally. We receive healing in our marriages, our relationships, our family. We receive healing right now from the blood of Jesus. And Lord, as I, I pray today, as, as, as my family today drinks this juice, Lord, I thank you that we realize that we have the DNA of God living on the inside of us. It will purify our blood today. No sickness and disease can live in anyone's body in this place today. It has to go. Healing, come forth now in the name of Jesus. You can receive this juice. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blood, for restoration in our lives, Lord. Healing, forgiveness, salvation, love. You receive it all in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I just got a text from my daughter, actually. This is what it says. I'm not even joking. I just drank my smoothie, and it didn't hurt. I can, I can swallow. It feels normal. OMG, which means, oh, my God. And then it says, God is good with a smiley face. She's watching online, so... Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Yep. Hallelujah. See the microphone, Dad. Hold on, Grandma Pat. Here you go. You know, I, I want to say something today that I know the Lord wants us all to Hold take this in. Hold it close. When I got born again, a lady came to a hospital and where I was working. And I got born again. And when I got born again, all hell broke loose in my life. The worst things that I ever had happened. I mean, I would have never walked through the waves and the torrents and the storms. But this lady stayed with me. And I'm thinking of you today. And those of you who go out and, and are harvesters, that whoever you harvest, Put it in your heart to stay by that person. There were times when I would call on the phone and I would be screaming, I can't do this, I can't do it. And I'm going to tell you what that woman would say to me, talk in tongues, Pat. Talk in tongues. I blah, 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 blah. And then five minutes later, I can't do it, I can't do it. She stayed with me. And she stayed with me today. And believe me, the devil will pay back everything he ever did to me in every second of every minute of every time he took my life. That's why I am so loud when I pray <laughs> and mean when I pray. <laughs> so you stay with her. And there will be times when she'll be screaming at the top of her voice. You calm the storm. Command the waves to stop in the wind. Amen. Stay with her. Amen. And that is for all of us who go out and get anybody born again. Make sure that you're going to stay with them. Thank you, Lord. Don't just shove them off to yes. somebody else. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Grandma Pat. Amen. Amen. A lot of wisdom. Praise God. We're receiving our uh, harvest offering. We do it first every month. We're uh, normal to this around here. We know this. This money goes into... 
if you need an envelope, lift your hand. This money goes into, uh, we feed and clothe every Thursday here. Awesome testimonies are coming out of that room every Thursday. People getting healed, saved, uh, families being restored, all kinds of awesome stuff. And so uh, not only does, does this offering go towards that every Thursday for food and clothes, but it also goes towards folks that just need some help sometimes uh, here in the local body and, and stuff like that. We're able to be a blessing to our community. So we'll be receiving our offering. So if you need an envelope, just lift your hand and get that ready. And, uh, uh, you know, God's just good. Amen? Amen. Just demonstrating himself every day to us and through us. Amen? Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead, guys, and just receive it whenever you're ready. I just want to say this while we're uh, doing this. We've been praying on Tuesday mornings. We've been praying before service. We've been decreeing God dealt with me about this. He said, you need to start calling this church what it is. And he told me here not too long back, he said, your church is not a library, it's a hospital. Amen. I said, what do you mean? He said, it's not going to be a, just a, a real strong just emphasis on teaching, even though there will be teaching here. He said, I want people to come in here that are sick, spirit, soul, body, socially, yes. financially, whatever. I want them healed here, and I want them to be able to go out the door healed and well and delivered and so we we've begun to decree and proclaim this is a hospital we've been believing god that the angels are going out escorting people in we've been believing that god's given us divine appointments for people to come in and to <coughs> receive help and to re receive healing and today as we saw the lord move among us he reminded me what of what we've been decreeing what we've been saying yeah. so just start helping us and agreeing with us and, and saying this and being this and doing this, and we'll watch God do what he needs to do through this fellowship. Amen? Amen, amen. Let's stand up. Praise God. True. In closing today, I'm um, just going to pray for two people. A lady by the name of Kim asked for prayer for uh, stomach issues. And then also another minister in Canada that I'm familiar with. Uh, actually, uh, his daughter is going to be coming out in October to do some worship stuff for us. His name's Barry. He had a massive heart attack a couple days ago. He's a minister there. Uh, God uses him to minister a lot to the Native Americans uh, in Canada. And so, but he's, he's recovering, he's healed, but uh, we just want to pray for him and lift these two issues up. Amen. Lord, as we close today and leave, we thank you for your love today that's been poured out in our lives today, Lord, for helping others, healing others, saving others in this place today, Lord. We are grateful and thankful for that, Lord. It blesses us so much, Lord. And Lord, as we leave today, we pray for Barry, we pray for Kim. Lord, we command healing right now to flow in their bodies. We command recovery, we command strength to flow in Kim, healing to flow in her body, healing to flow in Barry's body. We command healing and strength right now and life to their organs right now in the name of Jesus. And use them for your glory, God. We thank you for it right now. We believe it in Jesus' name. And I speak the blessing of the Lord upon every person in this place. Give us God appointments this week, Lord. Bring people across our path that we can demonstrate the love and the power of God. We ask you to use us in that, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Bless you. We'll be back tonight if you want to come back at 6 o'clock. Love you guys.